Hello and welcome, everyone, to Good Old Rocky Talk, the Vol Society podcast. I'm your host, Brad, here with my partners, the Davids. We're glad you're listening wherever you are. This is Good Old Rocky Talk. It is here, folks. Florida Week is upon us. Hello, everyone. This is your host, Brad Frank, here with my partners once again, David Dees and David Morrison. How are we doing tonight, guys? What's up, Brad? What's up, David Morrison? How are you, man? Doing well. It is Florida week, Gator Hater week across Ball Society. Yes, sir. Uh, it is. It's going to be a wild Saturday afternoon on Rocky Top. Guys, I have waited all year for this. I know everyone listening has to. I have dreamed that we would be in the spot we are now. I think some of us thought, yes, we could be there undefeated going into Florida, or yes, we're going to be there, but we're going to have one loss meaning that pit game. But I'm going to tell you guys, the perfect scenario has set itself up for this Saturday. The Volunteers are undefeated at 3-0. and We did beat Pitt in an overtime showdown, which was an incredible game. Here we are just days away from Tennessee, Florida, in Neyland, and to beat it all, game day will be there. How excited are you? Leave the kids at home. Leave the kids at home. You've been warned. I took my nine-year-old son up to the old Miss game last year, and it was, you know, it was a pretty rough environment. And he had a blast, but there was a few things I, I wish he hadn't heard. So I'm not yeah. going to make that same mistake twice. I'll probably avoid taking kids to the Florida game this year. I'll I'll take him to a ball game later in the year, maybe UT Martin or Kentucky or something like that. But uh, this is going to be a wild, wild atmosphere. You know, and I hate to, I hate that it has to be that way. You know, honestly, I have a kid as well. But, but the truth is, uh, yeah, you're you're going to want to leave the young ones at home because you're going to hear things. Unfortunately, you're going to hear things that you know your kids should not be hearing. You're probably going to see a few fights break out at the game. Actually, probably quite a few fights will be breaking out. You're going to see a lot of drunk people. Yeah. A lot of alcohol is going to be consumed at $15 a pop. At $15 a pop, yeah. And and the thing is, you're going to see 101 plus thousand of the craziest Vol fans of your life this Saturday. I can't wait. <laughs> Buddy. Oh, oh, oh. And all of our fans listening, I should have mentioned this first thing. Vol Society, the entire crew here, me, David Dees, David Morrison, will all be in attendance at this game. Let's go. Let's go. Brad, this is your first time on campus in, what, 12 years? Yes, that is correct. I graduated UTK in 2010, took off for Los Angeles shortly after, lived out there for eight, almost nine years, made my way back to the Charlotte area, so not too far away, but still, you know, it's a little bit of a distance, and I have yet to return to Neyland Stadium for a ball game. The last game I was at was, uh, I believe, 2010 when Tennessee. Oh gosh, Morrison, who do we play? It was. Um, was it Oregon? I, you tell I, me. I, I feel like it was Oregon. Yeah. That I think that's the, right. Yeah, that was. The was that infamous, the rain delay game? Yeah, it it felt like it took six hours for that to pass. So through. yeah, if that was the rain delay game, it was Oregon. I saw that game, and literally like weeks later, uh, I'm in my car and driving uh, west, and I, I haven't been back since. 
I, I hear that Knoxville um, is completely different. I hear the campus and the, the Cumberland Avenue is completely different. I hear the stadium is different, obviously. Um, so I, I got to tell you, this this hits uh, – it's it's personal for me. You know, to be back in Neyland and in Knoxville this Saturday is really going to mean something to me, you know. And, and to get a win this Saturday will just uh, – I mean, it, it's honestly setting up to be the, the perfect return for me. That's just me personally. So I'm very excited about this and I'm excited to be there with uh, my partners. So Vol Society will be in the house this Saturday and we are just super excited. So yeah. Can't wait. We're already we're recording this on Monday evening. So we're already one day down. That's right. We got four more sleeps. Four more. Yeah. So when you hear this, this podcast will go out uh, Tuesday um is when our fans are going to hear this so we are just days away guys and i tell you i i I, i've never been this i this is the most excited i've been in in a long time and i'll tell you this the besides this game coming up saturday because i know in my heart that this is going to be an epic it's going to be one of those games you're going to remember and and 20 years from now say hey do you remember that time you know it's going to be one of those games i just know it the environment's going to be insane. And the only time, the, the I should say the last time that I can remember saying that, it's going to blow your mind. This shows we're getting old. For me, it was um, would have to be 2004. I was a freshman, okay, at Tennessee. My first year there. And the game that I can say, the last game that was just a wow game, would be that Tennessee Florida game again, Florida, 2004. Do you guys remember it? Will I Hoyt do. makes well. He first he missed a kick. Yes, and everyone thought, "Oh gosh, we're going to lose the game because of this guy." What does this guy do? Redeems himself. This is under Philip Fulmer still, and he kicks a 50-yard field goal to win the game. And guess what? Not only was that amazing, it's also, look it up in the books, guys, it was the highest attendance in Neyland Stadium history. I think it was, what, 109 or 110, if I'm not mistaken. Unbelievable game. I don't think this Florida game is going to be as close as that one. I agree with that. I think the envi- – here's, here's why I bring that up. First of all, that, can you believe that was 18 years ago? Boys, we're getting old. 18 years ago, that was the most memorable game I, I'd been to in, in Neyland. And here we are. I'm hoping this will be a memorable game, and I know it will be. And I'll tell you why. That game, this game Saturday may not be as close, guys. But what you're going to see is a taste of the 90s environment back in Knoxville. And if anybody's been around... And you were around in the 90s when Tennessee was elite and a dominant force, okay? That was the norm in Neyland Stadium. Just wild, wild games and a loud, roaring crowd. Am I right, Morrison? You are right. I mean, you talk about some of the greatest moments in college football history has taken place inside of Shields Watkins Field at Neyland Stadium. Some of the rowdiest college football fans reside there. Uh, you know, the think about the history of Tennessee and Florida. You mentioned that 2004 game you were at. Uh, matter of fact, I ran into that uh, quarterback that played in that game over the weekend, Eric Ainge. Shout out to Eric Ainge over the yes. weekend. Who will, by the way, we spoke with, uh, we had a conversation with Eric that, uh, on Saturday Mm -hmm. and he said he would definitely get on the podcast with us as a guest. So that's coming up soon, guys. It's in the book. So hopefully in the next few weeks, Eric Ainge will be on here. So stay tuned. We'll let you know when that happens. But yeah, to my point, uh, uh, Morrison, um, you know, those kind of games back in the 90s, if you were lucky enough to be around then and remember this, we haven't seen these kind of environments and, and uh, atmosphere in, God, how 15 plus years. It's just been gone. 
it's been a long time uh, since we've seen these atmospheres. I mean, there's been some big games over the years. Sure, but But sure. They're nothing to the magnitude of what we're going to see Saturday. And, that's, and, and that just tells me, when we, here we are, we're back, guys. What you're going to see Saturday, I'm telling you now, is going to bring you back to the 90s, okay? It's sold out. I mean, we sold out Akron. We're going to talk about Akron here in just a second and break it down. But a te- just a terrible matchup in Akron last week, and we sold it out. This is back in the day. We're, we're reliving now. We're going back to the 90s when we were elite, and this is what our fan base always did. So if you guys are like me, you've got to be just stoked to be seeing what's happening right now in Knoxville. I'm just so happy for my kids that haven't gotten to experience this. Hey, man. Like, like Morrison said, there's been some big games. There's been some big moments, but, but not like this, to where you feel like your program's truly coming out of the, the exile that we've been in. Yep. You've got a, a coach that you have confidence in. You've got a, a quarterback you have confidence in. You're ranked number 11 in the AP poll, number 12 in the coaches poll, heading into Florida week. Get a chance to close out September at 4-0. and uh, There's not been as much riding on this Tennessee-Florida game in years past because you just felt like, ah, Tennessee's not going anywhere no matter what. And this year we have real expectations and with every challenge that they get past, more, more and more it builds and builds. So, uh, you know, I know we'll, we'll talk about future games and what this, if you win this one, how much bigger does the LSU game become here in two weeks? And then if you win that one, how much bigger does the Alabama game come after that? So just to have that kind of uh, meaning into the ball game this year uh, is, is just really special and something that I'm, I'm excited that this young generation of Tennessee fans, younger than us, you know, uh, or getting experience for probably the first time. Amen, brother. Man, I'm telling you guys, get ready, guys. I promise you Saturday is going to be one to remember. All right, let's break down Akron real quick. We can talk all day. We are going to talk more, I promise you, about Florida. But let's uh, let's go over Akron last week. Um, you know, let's thoughts, thoughts on that Akron game. And I, I tell you, I'll start it off. And then, um, if you have anything you want to add Morris and D's, please go ahead. You know, my thoughts on that game, 63 to six win over Akron. What, what is there to really say? We all gave our predictions last week and I'll tell you, I'm not sure what you guys said. I, you might've been right there at it too. I know I was. I believe I had us at 63-0 in my prediction. I could be wrong, but I think that's what I said. And my goodness, very close, 63-6. to So no surprises here. We kicked their tail like we should have, okay? Um, if I had to say anything about this Akron game, uh, Dees, Morrison, tell me if you agree, but um, injuries. Injuries had me a little worried there. You know, we definitely had a few injuries on a on, with a terrible game like that. It, it's terrible to see your guys go down and get injured on a game like that, especially when you got a big game coming up. So that kind of, you know, did not make me happy. Let's put it that way. Um, you know, you had Tillman, I believe. You had Small and you had Sampson all sustaining some injuries. Uh, the good news, from what I understand, is they're not – um, long term, and I believe they're day to day and should return on Saturday. But still, you'd hate to see these guys take any kind of an injury before Florida. So that's one thing. My biggest takeaway would be Jalen Hyatt continues to impress. And <laughs> boy, does he have some speed. My goodness. This guy is just every game I'm falling more and more in love with this guy. Are you guys feeling the same way? Yes, I am. Uh, you know, we've talked on our variety of Ball Society uh, platforms about, you know, the breakthrough of Jalen Hyatt. You know, he was on the preseason cover a couple of years ago, and now when is he going to break out? And he had a great showing on Saturday, uh, you know, just pulling up his numbers really quick. You know, 
five catches, 166 yards, two touchdown, average over 33 yards per catch, including Fantastic. a, a 57-yard touchdown pass uh, from Hendon Hooker. I'm excited because – Kind of, I know we're about to really break down Akron, but we saw Brew McCoy struggled on Saturday. Had a couple penalties go against him. Had yeah. a couple drop catches. Jalen Hyatt was like, "Okay, our teammates down right now. Hopefully, it's just a one game being off. I'm going to go ahead and take over." And he established himself and really broke through. And um, he had a great game against Ball State. Uh, and you know, like I said, we're seeing his progression. Uh, week in and week out, and like I said, hopefully it continues on and really build this a strong wide receiver core once we get into the heart of SEC play. Absolutely. So that's one guy that I'm just, oh my gosh, I am I'm just, again, falling in love with this guy every week, man. Not only that, check out his style. You ever see what he's wearing at the ball walks? My goodness. This guy is styling and profiling, buddy. Check it out if you haven't. Go look at some pictures online. I love this guy. I love everything about him. Two other guys I want to talk about real quick, and then Morrison, I'll let you, you finish up if you have some more comments about Akron. Dylan Sampson, he has to play more. The guy looked fantastic in my book. Um, mark my word right now, and this is common sense. You guys know this. If you know football, you know this. That guy's going to be a big name for Tennessee in the next few years, folks. I'm telling you. If you break it down and look at the way he ran the ball the other night, Hey, as a freshman, this guy's the real deal. He has so much talent, speed. It just trust me, we have to play him more. That's my that's my opinion there. But I, I love the way he looked. And then last but not least, hey, you gotta give a shout out. Hey, we we've talked about him before last year and maybe cracked some jokes, but I'm gonna be honest with you. All the jokes are for fun. I love every one of these guys. They're good athletes, they're good, they're good men. Joe Milton, I'm proud of you, buddy. Okay? Not only did you stick it out and you're, you're, you're QB2 and you're okay with that and you're here to do what's best for Tennessee football, but I'm going to tell you, buddy, if you're listening to this, you ought to be proud of this guy. This guy has improved tremendously so far over last year. Period. This guy's come in every time. Go look at the games he's come in, especially. I know it was Akron. I understand his throws, his ability, his thinking, his decision, quick decision-making, and his passes are absolutely spot on. Did you, Morrison, talk about that pass he made. Was it to, uh, was it to my man? Uh, he threw that one to Ramel Keaton, and then he threw one to Walker Merrill uh, in the second half. Uh, yeah, That's both right. of them was just fantastic passes. Of Incredible like, passes. Absolutely. So that's all I want to say about that. I, those are the only things I, I kind of wanted to take away from the Akron game. Morrison, if you have other things, let's hear it now. But uh, my goodness, man, I love you, Joe Milton. Thanks for being a ball and just, uh, you know, you're looking good, man. I, I'm, I'm proud to have you at QB2. Let's put it that way. Yeah, uh, just my thoughts on uh, Akron really quick. Like, you hit most of the points. Uh, it was just a, a total beatdown, uh, what Tennessee did to them. Uh, glad to see some players uh, get some playing time. Uh, you know, I agree Dylan Sampson needs to play a little bit more. Uh, you know, Joe Milton did a fantastic job, four for five for 112 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, had a better QBR rating than Hennon Hooker did on uh, Saturday night. Uh, and Hooker went uh, – Went, was just two yards under 300 going in the night. Um, Taven Jackson, happy to see him get his first career uh, touchdown at Tennessee. It was on a running touchdown. Uh, glad to see that. Uh, like I said, Mel Keaton had that huge touchdown grab. Uh, Squirrel White finally broke through on a big catch, went for 47 yards. Fantastic. Uh, it looks like they're building some confidence with him. He, he got to play a little bit of special teams, seemed to – not be nervous about it, seem very confident. Uh, and just a lot of guys got uh, receptions. Twenty, uh, As far as the wide receiver core goes throughout the day and some running backs, uh, the team went 20 catches for 438 yards and four touchdowns. Uh, great stats for Tennessee all overall. And as far as Akron goes, it seemed like, you know, like I said, Akron really struggled in the first half. It, they kind of – picked up their offense a little bit in the second half. And I'll give credit to DJ Irons. He gutted it out. 
throughout the whole game. Still went for 241 yards. They don't have much of a rushing game. They're going to have to really uh, get something going there. Shockey Jock Louis, uh, who played for Pittsburgh last year, uh, I, I remember when they called his name, I was like, oh, yeah, he was on the Pitt Panther team and saw him last year. He ended up going for 100 yards on the day. But like I said, Tennessee took care of business. Uh 63 to 6. I think I said like 61 to 3. So I kind of got close on my score prediction. But happy we got that game out of the way. And now we got a big one coming up on Saturday. Yeah, you got that right. You got that right, man. Awesome. Hey, let's move on. Uh, so what did we learn this past week in college football, guys? Who wants to take this? Uh, D's? What are your thoughts? I think the number one thing I learned is LSU is much improved from week one when we saw them against Florida State. Yeah, uh, they they played a tough Mississippi State team that a lot of they came in came in as favorites in that ball game, and uh, LSU wins at home. Uh, they are improving. Uh, they're they're going to be a tough test for Tennessee here in a couple of weeks uh, after our bye week in, in Florida, but uh, I learned that I think LSU is improved. And then also, I would say uh, I enjoyed watching Friday night, that Florida State game uh, versus Louisville. That was yeah. an entertaining ball game. Florida State's quarterback goes down uh, in the second half, and they bring in, I believe he's a freshman. Uh, if he's not, he may be a redshirt freshman or a sophomore. He's a young player, never started, never got any game reps. And uh, he came in and really looked good. He, he It took him a little while to warm up and, and get going, but once he did and settled in, he made some ex, ex, excellent throws, and Florida State ended up pulling that one out on the road at Louisville. But uh, it was a fun game to watch if anybody caught that. I think – what was the kid's name? Rhoda Baker, I think, is the quarterback uh, that came yeah. in. And he was fun to watch. So, and, and Louisville's quarterback, if you haven't seen him yet, Cunningham, uh, he's, he's a heck of an athlete. He can beat you with his legs. And he made some passes that were just phenomenal, just dropping them over, over the – linebackers heads and, and, and defenders heads and um two fun fun teams to watch not not two of the best teams in the country but it was an entertaining game at least yeah yeah morrison what are your thoughts uh my overall thoughts it was basically blowout saturday and uh, you know hate to be negative but there may be some coaches that their seat just got a lot hotter uh brian harson yeah. down at auburn uh man that that I was shocked that Penn State went down to Jordan Hare and just blew them out uh, right away. It seems like Jimbo got a nice win uh, for Texas A&M over Miami. Uh, they got a tough one coming up against Arkansas, so let's see if that that trend may continue or may go the other way. Uh, just you know, your your buddy down in Columbia that you call the clown. He had a, uh, a a rough time with Georgia, and then he had a not so nice press conference, and kind of went off on, on a uh, a reporter. I'm not going to quote what he says. Uh, he's just, a clown. Yeah, so said a word I I don't like saying. Uh, but you know, it's like I said, there's there's some coaches out there that's going to have to really get going here, or they may be. Uh, Maybe look for a job. Jeff Collins down at Georgia Tech. They got shut out by Ole Miss 48 to nothing, which, you know, I wasn't expecting a much of a game there. But, man, Georgia Tech looks like one of the worst teams in college football. So, uh, yeah. we'll see what's going to happen as these hot seats are getting hotter now as we roll into the season. Yeah. I'm going to start referring yeah. to Shane Beamer as Freaky Friday because he looks like he's a grown man's body <laughs> who switched places with a 13-year-old. If you watch him at his, on the sidelines and at his press conferences, what a weird, just off-putting kind of, yeah, just weird dude. Weird dude. He's, he's an oddball. He's a clown, and he's an oddball. I'm telling you, the guy, there's something wrong there. Not a fan. If you haven't figured that out by now, I'm not a fan. And poor Nebraska. I'll throw this in there. Poor Nebraska. Normally, when you make a coaching change midseason, the following week your team shows up, especially in you're playing number six Oklahoma at home. You expect all the emotion and all the mm. the pressure being off. New coach, we're going to come out and perform. And they came out, open and drive, went up seven nothing, and from then on, it was all Oklahoma. And that poor Nebraska program, they are just out in the wilderness. And I don't, I'm yeah, afraid they they're too far gone to ever get back. 
They want Urban Meyer to come be their coach. I don't think that's happening. Uh, maybe they'll get oh, lucky and, and, and stumble into a Jamie Chadwell at Coastal Carolina if they can get him to come take that job. Uh, it's going to take he a creative hire and somebody can he win wouldn't with take that. It. It's going to have to be a guy it. that can win with less talent because they cannot recruit like they used to. Being in the Big Ten has really yeah. isolated them. They're they're not able to go into Texas like they used to do. And yeah, they're, they're just, golly, poor Nebraska. And those fans are great, passionate fans. They're a lot like Tennessee yeah. fans. And they are just struggling. R.I.P. Nebraska. It's sad. But we've been there. Let's hope they can get out of this mess. Um, guys, can we can we please give a shout out to um, App State on a incredible storybook ending with game day there, guys. You couldn't write this up any any better in a book. You couldn't read. You could buy this book and and this is how it would like read out, right? Just like in a movie, right? It's too good to be true, you know, all these things. Guys, what what I witnessed, App State, by the way, right up the road from me, shout out to you guys. You deserve every bit of this. It's like a Cinderella team. I, I've never seen anything like this. You got game day there all day. who they play? Troy, right? Yeah. Playing Troy, game is like over. And they do a Hail Mary, just threw it up in the end zone. I mean, it was the most unbelievable thing. And App State catches it and walks into the end zone and wins the game. Is that not incredible? Yeah, they're a cool program. They're having a charmed year. Imagine if they pulled that first week off against North Carolina, they'd be sitting here undefeated. You're right, man. You said it right. They're a fun program. They really are. They used to be in the uh, Southern Conference, uh, you know, with Chattanooga and ETSU back in the day, and they were a, and they were a big powerhouse in FCS, and you know now they've elevated to FBS uh, in the Sun Belt, and with all the talk of college football realignment, you know, if I'm a Power Five school or whatever's left of college football, I would definitely take a serious consideration into Boone, North Carolina. Because you got an exciting program, has a passionate fan base. It's not, you know, it's not a metropolitan city at all. I mean, Boone is a a smaller town, uh, but a gorgeous town. Let's, let's yes, yes, let's call it like it is. We I go there often. I shouldn't say often. We don't go there enough, but we love to take weekend trips to Boone. I'm going to tell you, it is a gorgeous. It's not like you think, guys. It's not like a hillbilly town or anything of that nature. No. It is the most quaint, cute little town you've ever seen, nestled right in the Blue Ridge Mountains. Um, I highly recommend you take a trip there. It's incredible. And the stadium is so awesome, nestled right there in the mountains. I'm telling you, it's a cool place. It's awesome. So anyway, shout out to them. That's that's just awesome to see. I love seeing these kind of stories. Absolutely. How, how much is the Boone City uh, tourism company paying you for that promo there brad i'm not allowed to discuss that <laughs> moving on i'm serious I'm, i wouldn't say it uh i wouldn't say it if i didn't mean it guys i really mean that um for me what did i learn um i don't know i feel like how, first of all how good is missouri state are they are they really good Bobby Petrino is their coach, so they have a great right. capable head coach. I don't know, talent-wise, they shouldn't have been able to probably play with Arkansas, but his system probably kept them on the field. Okay, so that's that's really what I was getting getting at is I kind of learned that mm, maybe Arkansas is not as good as I think they are. I don't know. I know the game was pretty close. For, what, 38-27? Is that right? I mean, it was a challenge for Arkansas. Yeah, tw- Arkansas was a 25-point favorite, and it did not go that way. There you go. So that's number one. And then, guys, I got to tell you, uh, Florida. <laughs> I I hope I'm right um, come Saturday. But Florida continues to show me that they're just not <laughs> that good. Barely beating South Florida 31-28. to 
Yeah, they tried to they tried to ruin our uh, our meeting with them. It, it would have taken some of the luster off of this beatdown we're about to give them. Correct. And we talked about this D's offline. I'm I'm very very glad the Gators got that win. That's the only time you're going to hear me say that. Um, but I'm glad they got the win. I I don't want them to lose that game. Then come to Knoxville. I want them to win this game, even though they barely won against South Florida. But you know, again, I I I watch them play. I, I'm dissecting what they're doing on offense and defense, and you know, there's no reason, there's no reason we can't beat this team down Saturday. I really mean that from the bottom of my heart. They're not that good of a team, guys. Okay. Third third down efficiency for their defense is at fifty percent. That's just awful. Yep. They're not they're not getting off the field on third downs. They struggle with South Florida, who's you know they got a lot of transfer players in, but they're not super talented. I mean, that's a game that you would think Florida should dominate. They were a twenty-something point favorite. Yep. And uh, I think Florida's really hurting without their linebacker Ventrell Miller, who's also going to miss against Tennessee. He's the leader of that defense. He's, uh, you know, he he's a guy that they can't go without. They're not as deep as they used to be. We talked about this a few weeks ago. Florida's depth is not what it has been. Uh, basically, Dan Mullen didn't recruit for a couple of years. So they've got a real thin roster. They've got their starters, and that's about it. And they're hurting right now without v- Ventrell Miller on that defense. And then on offense, of course, Anthony Richardson. You, I think, Morrison, were you going to give that stat about his, his passing touchdowns? Yeah. Uh, so after three games, uh, Anthony Richardson has more tackles than touchdown passes. He has not thrown a touchdown pass in the first three games, but wow. he has three tackles on the year. So that just shows maybe we put way, way, way too much hype in Anthony Richardson and giving him the Heisman Trophy after that Utah game. You think? Yeah. Uh, Unbelievable. Emotional Great reaction after that first game, and now it's uh, snap back to reality, as Eminem used to say. Great stat, Morrison. Wow. It's incredible. Speaking of Anthony Richardson, let's uh, let's move on. So real quick, let's look ahead to this Tennessee-Florida game, guys. We've already said it. I'll just repeat it. If you have anything else you want to say, chime in, do your thing. And then we're going to get to my favorite part, our mailbag. We're going to go to the mailbox, Vol Society's mailbox, and answer your questions for this week. But looking ahead to Tennessee-Florida game, guys, this week, Again, I said it earlier, Morrison. Guys, if you were lucky enough to be around in the 90s when Tennessee was an elite program, you know that you witnessed some of the greatest games, environment, in the history of Tennessee football. This game Saturday, I promise you, is going to take you right back to the 90s environment. Mark my words. If you think Ole Miss last year was amazing, I promise you, you have not seen anything yet. And then you add the fact that game day's there. All eyes will be on this Tennessee game Saturday, and rightfully so. Get ready for a game to remember, folks. That's all I'm going to say about this game coming up. Dees, Morrison, go ahead. Yeah, big big game for this team this season. Big game for Josh Heupel and his tenure at Tennessee. Big game for the future of this program. Uh, it's it's a, a game against Florida at home where the stars have aligned. You're coming in 3-0. They're coming in shaky. They've got a quarterback who's unsure of himself. They've got a defense who's not been very impressive through three games. Uh, they somehow are 2-1, and one and they could just as easily be 0-3. Uh, there, it's going to be Anthony Richardson's first game on the road in a hostile environment as a starting quarterback. It's going to be Billy Napier's first game as a head coach coaching in Neyland Stadium. He's used to those crowds in Louisiana, and I know he's been an assistant in some big environments, but he's going to be the head coach for the first time in a hostile environment. And he's got a Tennessee fan base that's showing up. We're pissed off. We're tired of losing for so many years and how far they let the program slip. And this is a week where we get to exercise all those demons and let out all that frustration that's been building and building. And this week we're going to pour it all out on Florida and on this game on Saturday. So I think the atmosphere is going to be electric. Our offense is going to be electric. 
And I don't think Florida is built to keep up with it. Mm. I love it. Morrison. Yeah, D's uh, hit it right on the head. I mean, this is the game of the week in college football. Like I said, you know, Sunday morning we found out game day is coming to Knoxville. Uh, that's huge. I know we have opinions on ESPN, but still that's where the college football world is going to be looking upon is Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, a lot of the media is coming in. Josh Pay from Lake Kick Live is going to be doing some shows from Knoxville that week. Uh, and just the the entire Tennessee fan base, It's it's been a long time since we've had this excitement, whether – you know, from the 90s to the 2000s, and now here we are in this new generation. Uh, and these players on this team wasn't alive or barely uh, in existence when Tennessee was relevant. And now they're seeing what Rocky Top is all about, one of the loudest college football stadiums in the nation. And I don't know what Florida is going to expect on Saturday, but I think it can be a rude awakening you're going to have 101,000 of the most passionate college football fans screaming at the top of the, our lungs, and all three of us will be there inside Neyland Stadium doing the same thing. Uh, it's going to be an electric atmosphere. Uh, you know, I think this team is ready. I feel more confident about this game than I did last year when Ole Miss came into town uh, just because of everything is coming together. Our team is healthy. We, you know, we had some scary injuries last week with Tillman going down. Is small, but it seems like they're okay. Uh, this team is healthy, three and zero. To me, I want to see can Tennessee just get that eight hundred pound gorilla off their back? Don't shoot themselves in the foot every time because you know if we've seen this before, obviously, uh, where we get a lot of hype and then something happens. Can Tennessee limit those mistakes? Uh, even if the game doesn't go our way, you know, r- you know, fix those mistakes very quickly and get this game back in there. Matter of fact, I think it's one of the Neela Maxims <laughs> as far if, as far as the breaks don't go your way. Uh, I wish there you I go working that in. Yeah, there you go. Yep. Mm. You're and right on I the money, man. I think we're all excited about this week. Absolutely. Guys, let's move on. Let's go to my favorite part, and I'm sure it's yours too. Let's go to the mailbox and answer questions from the people who make Ball Society what it is today, the fans. All right, guys, let's go to our first question. This comes from Elroy W. From Bartlett, Tennessee. Elroy, thanks for tuning in, buddy, and thank you for your question. Bartlett, Tennessee. Guys, where's Bartlett? Anyone know? I think it's out around Memphis, West Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah it's over in the, the Memphis area. Which, by the way, I want to clarify where Monterey, Tennessee is really quick. Well, I thought it was in West Tennessee. It's actually near Cookville. So uh, ah. it's west of us, but it's not that west. It's not even near Nashville. So uh, This but, is in regards to a question last week from a fan, by the way, yes. from Monterey, Tennessee. Thank yes. you, Morrison, for clarifying. Yeah, Good job, Morrison. We need to learn our uh, – this show is beneficial for learning our state geography. I know. It's fantastic. After Ray County, I'm lost. <laughs> <laughs> Elroy, let's go to your question here. He says, who do you think will be the breakout star for Tennessee in this game Saturday? Mm, that's a good question. Morrison, why don't you take this one first? Well, I'm going to go with Jalen Hyatt. You know, I, the, what he did against Akron last Saturday, continue that momentum. Obviously, this team is going to – really focus heavily on Cedric Tillman, uh, and, and we're assuming he's playing, uh, and, and Brew McCoy too. I'm sure Florida looked at that film and saw Brew kind of struggling, thinking, okay, well, if we can really focus on these two. But I think Jalen Hyde, he's red hot right now. I want to see him really go off, get a 100-yard game, get another touchdown. 
Jalen Hyatt is my uh, impact player coming up on Saturday. I love it. David Dees, what do you got, buddy? That's a great one. I would have said Jalen Hyatt on offense. And then on defense, I'm going to throw one out there just because I think this guy has the opportunity to make some plays. Uh, I'm going to go with Kamal Haddon at cornerback. He's already gotten him a couple of picks this year. One or two. He may just have the one. Uh, But he definitely made his presence felt against Pittsburgh. And I think this is a game where uh, if Florida tries to challenge him, I think he can really make some plays and maybe force a turnover. And and I I just, I like the energy and and the, um, the energy he brings on the defensive side of the ball. I think he'll make his presence felt out there on defense on Saturday. Yeah, I agree with that. So guys, I think we all three can agree on Jalen Hyatt. That's my guy. I think, um, I think on offense, that's the guy that uh, is going to be a breakout for us, um, breakout star for us this Saturday. The guy's getting better and better every game. I expect a big game from him. Uh, defense, guys, I'm going to go with my my uh, my ends. I'm going to go with Tyler Barron and, and uh, Byron Young. I think these guys are going to have a, a great game, and I think they're going to create pressure for Anthony Richardson and uh, put him in his place. And I think that's going to be a, a big key for our success Saturday is uh, stopping that guy. I don't think he's that good anyways, but I think if you throw pressure his way, he's going to make mistakes. Okay? So that's uh, that's what I think. Elroy, thank you for the question. It's a great one. Let's go to our next question from Ashley H. from Greenville, Tennessee. Where's Greenville, Tennessee, guys? Tri-Cities? I think up here, Bristol, Johnson City, up in that area. Maybe maybe a little bit further. Greenville. Just Greenville, north of Tennessee. Knoxville. Yeah. I north think that's Knoxville. right. Yeah, just north of Knox. Yeah. Okay. Very good. You're heading that right direction there, Morrison. Yeah, that's good. Hey, Ashley, hope you're doing well. Thanks for the question. Uh, Ashley says, do you think Tennessee and Josh Heupel can, be- can begin to dominate the Florida series? Wow, that's a great question. Um. My answer is simple. Um, That's without question. Why? Because Josh Heupel is possibly one of the greatest coaches in college football today, guys. I'm not just saying that because I'm a Tennessee fan. I'm saying it because it's true. To turn a program around the way he has done so in one year, the way he's done it, it's almost unheard of. Okay? We were a nobody for years, many years. And now we're the 11th ranked team in the nation. Enough said. Yes. I certainly do, to answer your question. Morrison. I believe so. Uh, It just kind of all depends on how long Florida keeps Billy Napier around. I mean, we've seen coaches kind of come and go over the last 10 years at Florida. Now, granted, we've lost some of those coaches we shouldn't have lost to, but that's another story for another day. Uh, I I think right now Florida's just going through that uh, rebuild right now. But, you know, I just don't know how Billy Napier is going to do in the future. I mean, yeah, he got that win against Utah the first week, but it just all depends on how the Florida base and the Florida boosters and alumni, are they patient with him? Uh, but as far as Josh Heupel and Tennessee goes, like I said, I feel a lot more confident with this team, with this program and the direction. Um, you know, in the SEC East, you know, outside of Georgia, it's a very easy division to move right up near there. So I definitely think it – the trend can be heading into a uh, Tennessee's direction, hopefully throughout this next decade. Yeah. These, what are your thoughts, man? Uh, I would say it all boils down to Josh Heupel and his system. And is his system uh, just going to be a continuous matchup problem for Billy Napier's system? If all things are considered and they both have uh, high, highly ranked recruiting classes for this next season, and I think both of them will probably recruit well, uh, but when you put them on the field is what Josh Heupel does with the tempo offense and spreading you out and going to his receivers on the perimeter. And is that going to be something that a Napier team can play with? I look at Mark Stoops at Kentucky and we only have one year sample size of Josh Heupel in this league. So we'll see after this season, maybe I'll change my mind. 
I think right now Josh Heupel's system is going to be really tough for Mark Stoops to go against because his offenses aren't built to compete that way. He controlled time of possession last year against Tennessee and still ended up losing in a shootout. So I, I don't know. I, 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 do I think Tennessee can dominate the Florida series? It's possible, but let's just get to where we're beating them more and more consistently. And I, I do think that there's a chance that Josh Heupel's system can be tough for Billy Napier's teams and his system to match up against. That, that'd be the way, way I'd answer that question. But good, good question, Ashley. Yeah. Good. Good answers, guys. Let's go to our next question from Ryan S. from good old Knoxville, Tennessee. So Ryan asks, if Tennessee wins this game Saturday, where will they be ranked next? Hmm. That's a good question. Well, we're 11th right now. David Dees, what do you think? Without looking directly at the schedule in front of us, I know Clemson plays Wake Forest, I think, this week. That's at a couple Wake of ranked Forest. teams. Yeah. Uh, and who else ahead of Tennessee has big games? Uh, Kentucky plays Northern Illinois. They should handle mm-hmm. them. Uh, Alabama plays Vanderbilt. Uh, Ohio State plays Wisconsin. Uh, Kansas State, Oklahoma, USC, Oregon State. So as I glance at that, there's no one obvious that I feel like is going to lose in, ahead of Tennessee. But if they take care of business at home and, and look fairly impressive doing it, I would think, you know, they're currently number 11 in the AP poll. I would think they could at least jump up two or three spots to number eight, number nine, somewhere in that range. And, uh, you know, we would all love to see that. And then you got a bye week right after that. that we're not having to play. We're just waiting on some other teams ahead of us to lose. Uh, so coming into that LSU game, assuming they take care of business against Florida, they could, you know, easily be somewhere around the six, seven, eight line. I would think. God, it's incredible to think, huh? Incredible. And I agree with you, Dees. I think you said eight or nine, possibly after this win. That's where I'm at. I think we're going to fall. If we win, um, Saturday, I think we're going to be somewhere between that eight and nine. That's what I'm thinking too. So more so, what do you think? Yeah, I was thinking uh, cracking the top 10 just all depends on how Clemson does at Wake Forest. Uh, it seems like the rest of the top 10 is kind of playing easier opponents. But, you know, I think the AP poll will definitely award us if we get a huge win over Florida. Um, they may bump us up a couple spots to get into that top 10. Like I said, we go into the bye week. And uh, I know the, the media poll really fluctuates the top 25 especially early on because they because of television and trying to get people to watch these big games and they'll kind of tweak the rankings up a little or uh yeah the top 25 rankings up a little bit and probably put like prestige matchups along the way that's just a little conspiracy for me but uh, you know i i think definitely jump into the top 10 like i said 8 9 10 around in there and then when you go into lsu and I'm sure LSU will probably be ranked around that time, so that sets up for a, a pretty nice little matchup there. Yep. Cool. Let's go to our last question. This comes to us from Virgil D. Virgil D. from Dyersburg, Tennessee. Virgil, thank you for the question. Thank you for following us on uh, Vol Society. He asked... Is Tennessee football back? Wow, short and sweet. Is Tennessee football back? Well, Virgil, the only answer to that for me personally is without question. I don't even know what else to say. Without question, Virgil, the volunteers are back and the volunteers are relevant again. And that's because of leadership. I've talked about this many, many times. Rocky Top finally figured it out. We have the right leaders on Rocky Top right now, folks. And we're back. No question. Morrison. Yeah, I definitely think we're back to a certain degree. Um, I mean, you look at the entire athletic department. We mentioned this on Ball Society Live throughout the last year or so. And I know we're a football-centric podcast, but you looked at what the baseball team has done the last couple of years. The basketball team has done. 
all being constantly raked. The Lady Vols constantly raked. And now football is carrying that momentum. And, and we all know football is the money maker. That's the number one sport on campus. And it's really very awesome just to see Tennessee football getting back to that prestige spot. And I think we're definitely getting back in that right direction. Uh, and if we beat Florida on Saturday, yeah, I, I really think this fan base already ignited is going to grow even more. And instead of being the butt end of the jokes for the last 15 years, I think some fans are going to take a step back and give us a little respect, thinking this team may be into something here. That's what I think. Yeah, I agree with you there, Morrison. I I would say, uh, yes, Tennessee is back to being nationally relevant. I mean, you can't be ranked number 11 in the country coming into this game, and if you win this game, maybe crack in the top 10 and not be relevant. Are they back to winning championships and competing for championships? No. Uh, but hopefully they will be soon. And and there's a lot of change going on in college football right now with the transfer portal, with NIL, with uh, conference realignment. And so I like where we're positioned. Like you mentioned, the leadership. And it's all kind of lining up at the right time uh, because what you don't want – is to be in the shoes of like a Nebraska or to be like where we've been the last few years and all this change is happening around you and you kind of get left behind. And so I think Tennessee is coming on this back onto the scene at the right time. And uh, it, it's really aligning for uh, Tennessee to be competitive for the next few seasons. And, and as long as Josh Heupel's here and he continues to, to recruit, uh, I think there's no reason to think this team can't uh, consistently be in the top 25. And, and if a playoff system expands, uh, that this can't, team can't be a, a perennial uh, playoff contender. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Guys, that's going to do it for our mailbag questions. Thank you once again, guys, for the questions. We love them. They were great as usual. Please continue to send those our way, and we'll be sure to answer those each week on the podcast. Guys, I have a question of my own. I just thought of it just now, and I want to get your take on it. Game day's in town Saturday. That means we're going to have to have a guest picker. Who's it going to be? Do you guys have any thoughts? I have some people in mind, but I want to hear, I want to hear from you, Morrison. Who do you well, think it's going to be? Not not necessarily. Well, I'll tell you what. You can answer it two ways. Who you who you would like it to be, and also who do you think they will actually go with? Go. Who I would love to see on there, and I don't know if she follows college football much, but you talk about East Tennessee and pop culture. I would love to have Dolly Parton as the celebrity guest picker for college game day. Like I said, I don't know. She may not know much about football, and, and she may, I don't know. I, I've never really heard her talk about it, but you talk about Dolly is just beloved across the nation. She's a major name in pop culture world. She's from East Tennessee, grew up in Sevierville. Uh, everybody that lives in East Tennessee knows her story and her rise to success. Uh, that's who I would go with, but kind of knowing how ESPN maybe operates, they'll probably go with Peyton since they just added McAfee on game day in the last couple of weeks. Both Pat McAfee and Peyton Manning were former teammates with the Indianapolis Colts. They may go with Peyton. Uh, if you – maybe a Candace Parker, uh, you know, a former Lady Vol. Uh, she's another name that's – uh, pretty popular in sports pop culture thing, you know, even though she's more of a basketball player, but uh, maybe tying with a, I don't know, a WNBA deal or whatever. But that's kind of the first couple names. And if you go like in, uh, maybe if you go in the world of professional wrestling, a Bianca Belair, a former Lady Vol, she's a big name in wrestling, uh, if you follow that. Uh, so that's kind of the three names. I know, okay, way too many, but. That's kind of who I'm thinking in general. It's probably going to be kind of one of those three. Okay. These? I'm good with all those. Uh, Dolly Parton would be awesome. 
But uh, if they wanted to go with Tony Vitello, if they wanted to go with Rick Barnes, someone on the athletic in the athletic department, I'd be good with that. And uh, I have no problem with Peyton Manning, whatever. Whoever they want. I'm probably not going to be watching anyway, so whoever they want. Hmm. Okay. We'll, well, be on the way, we'll be on our way to the game. Oh, I can't wait. Guys, I can't wait for this game. I'm so excited. I, I will DVR it just because yeah. I like seeing the exposure. I like seeing Tennessee take the big stage and be the focus. Yep, definitely. So for me, uh, David Morrison, you took mine. I love it. Dolly Parton, I think, would be fantastic. Would you settle for Lee Greenwood? No. <laughs> I see him way too many times. Oh, <laughs> man. Knocks. No, let's, let's be real. How about David, how about David oh. Keith? Sure. You know what's funny? My mom texted me that and I about David Keith, and I said, I don't think anybody under the age of 40 knows who David <laughs> Keith is. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. She's going to love that, Deez. Shout out to Lynn. Under- yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Shout out shout to, out to shout, Lynn. Shout out to Lynn. That's great. That's fantastic. That's great. But I would love to see Dolly Parton. You say what you want. She's unreal. She's probably the most loved, famous Tennessean I know. She does so much good in the world. And She knows how to put on a show. If ESPN is smart, listen. If you're listening, ESPN, if you're smart, you'll get her on there. Because I'm going to tell you, buddy, she knows how to put on a show and and get the audience going. This is what she does. Everyone loves her. You get her on the show, and I'm telling you, that would be a hit. I don't know if it'll happen, but um, that's my number one pick. Yeah, I agree, Morrison. Dolly Parton. Um, Did anyone even consider this? What about... um, all you wrestlers out there, all you wrestlers. What about the mayor of Knoxville? Kane, big Glenn Jacobs. Do you think there you go? I people are considering that. him. What do you, what, what's that D's? I said, I wouldn't mind him. There you go. I said, he'd have to come out in costume. Maybe they could have fire and uh, some fireworks <laughs> right? and pyro near the stage and let him come out. And- Brother. I could see it happen. If you want to put on a show, you get Kane in his outfit and you bring him out. That would be, I'm t- all the is wrestlers. He with, is he Kane with a mask or Kane without the mask? Oh, gosh. That would affect my decision. I would want the mask on. That's just of me course. personal. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I just kind of thought of that the other day. I'm like, you know what? He is the mayor of Knox. He's uh, everywhere up in Knoxville. He's everywhere, and he is Kane, baby. All you WWF, WWE wrestling fans, it might happen. You never know. Um, what about Bob Kessling? Oh, gosh. <laughs> that was a joke. Oh, I know. Looking right at his autograph. I have his autograph sitting three feet away from me here on the wall. I think it's worth... Last I checked, I think it went down a penny in value. <laughs> plus, plus Bob Kessler. Uh, what about this? This is kind of a wild name out there, uh, and he does a lot of wild stuff. What about Johnny Knoxville? Johnny? Hey! Because... There you go. The Morrison! Because he... Hey, of course, the, the new movie, Jack A., I'm going to keep it clean, came out this year, uh, the new one. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he's from Knoxville, so Morrison. he's kind of getting back relevant. Look at you. I didn't think of that guy. I'd be okay with that. Oh, of course. Johnny we'll Knoxville. Pull a stunt on stage on Kirk and Corso. I probably don't want to pull on those stunts on Corso. Don't pull a stunt on Corso, guys. Don't do that. McAf- I can see McAfee do something with him. but I, I, I have to say this. I watched some of game day last week. Kirk Herbstreet, for all the crap I've given him, he really does a good job in handling Lee Corso oh, yeah. right now. And uh, I just wanted to mention that. I was kind of moved the other day. Like, Lee 
misspoke. Oh, yeah. He called the Appalachian State mascot. If anyone else saw this, he called him Yosef or Yusuf. He got him backwards. Yes. I don't know what the thing's real name is, but he said the wrong thing. Yes. And the crowd started to boo, and they were about to turn and riot on him. And Kirk was like, calm down, everybody. Hey, hey, calm down. Like he, he And he talked yeah. him through it. And that's a, a tough position that they're all put in to kind of see him through the show. Uh, so it was just kind of cool to see Kirk Herbstreet step in and kind of save the day for Lee. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that, Dees. And I will say this about Kirk. I've, no, I've actually noticed this over the past few years. Kirk has kind of taken on that role of, um, honestly, like a, like a, you know, like a caretaker a yeah. for, for Lee Corso. And I, I really mean this, you know, we joke about, you know, anytime we joke about people, guys, it's for fun. We love these people. Lee Corso, he's a legend. He really is. Um, but I, these, I'm glad you made that, you brought that up, uh, because Kirk really is a good guy, and uh, and I tell you, he does take up for Lee Corso, and I think he he is really one of the biggest reasons why Lee Corso is still able to do this show. He really does take care of him. He does. So shout out to you. And so Kirk. if Lee misspeaks this weekend, let's not Vol Nation turn on him. No, uh, pretend it's your grandfather up there, That's or right. great grandfather in his case. Sure, sure. Do douche. Do do do. Hmm. Gosh, it's going to be a great, great weekend. Where are they going to be at? They're going to be outside of Ayers Hall. Is that where they're going to be? Probably. Yeah, right. There. Yeah, they announced that this afternoon. That's where they're going to be. Gotcha. Is that where they're going to be? Okay. Shout out to all of you who plan to be there at what? Three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning to set up and get a seat. Oh, gosh. Make sure you stay hydrated and have strong leg, leg muscles. Yeah. Ayers Hall. I got to tell you, that's the one building when I was at school. I purposely tried to get classes away from that building. It's a fantastic looking building, but my goodness. You got to walk up a big old hill to get to that, to get to Ayers Hall. And when you're 300 pounds like I was in uh, college, you're a little hot and sweaty by the time you get to class. Hmm. Anyways, all right, guys, I have one last question, then we're going to call it a day. We've gone over an hour again. This is crazy. Having too much fun. So here's my last question. If Tennessee beats Florida this Saturday, what did they do well? David Morrison. Uh, they limit their past mistakes, uh, not dumb penalties. I mean, you're going to have your typical standard offsides and false start penalties and maybe a holding call, but no personal foul penalties, no major penalties, uh, and also uh, special, you know, like uh, turnovers. The turnover battle has got to be huge. We can't be turning the ball over. You know, it like I said a couple weeks ago against Pip. You know, special teams plays uh, almost cost us that game. Uh, I think they play an almost perfect game, limit the turnover battle. Uh, Hendon Hooker continues his hot streak of not throwing a pick, knock on wood. Uh, and uh, like I said, just not have any two dumb penalties, unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. I think this team is very mature. We haven't seen a ton of it. I know we got a little bit of a scruffle with Akron last week. Uh, but you know, I like I said, keep their emotions in check and don't, don't let Tennessee become their own worst enemy in this game. Mm. Jeez. Yeah. I like that about the discipline and not, you know, obviously turnovers and penalties are huge, but, uh, I would say for years, this series was determined by who outrushed the other. Uh, I can't remember the stat, but it was a long period of time back in the nineties and two thousands where the, the team who rushed for the most yards won the game. I don't think that necessarily holds true today in today's game of football and the way these two systems operate. I think Tennessee's going to be able to throw the ball uh, all over the place on Saturday, and I think Florida will not be able to do that. They're going to have to rely on, on their rushing, so I think the stats will be a little skewed in those directions. But I think Tennessee uh, needs to definitely 
improve in the special teams. We've seen a few, even last week against Akron, there was a couple of opportunities where Akron, Akron had to block punts because Paxton Brooks was taking a little too long to get his punts off. We can't allow those kind of plays and those kind of mistakes like Morrison alluded to happen this week. Uh, I think if Tennessee just comes out and plays their game on offense, stays in front of the chains, uh, is able to get a run game going and established, uh, I, I think, and, and, and limit the turnovers, limit the, the penalties, and clean those special teams things up, especially in the punting game specifically, uh, I think Tennessee will win this game. I think Florida, like I said earlier, just does not have the horses to keep up with Tennessee's offense. And so if Tennessee can come out and get to an early lead, uh, I just don't think Florida is going to be able to to recover from it. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, for me, it's it's much the same, guys. Limit the turnovers. Run game is crucial. I really mean that. I haven't been too impressed with our run game so far. It's been okay at times. But I want to see our run game do really well Saturday. That's 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 a big that's a big thing come Saturday. The other thing for me is uh if we if we win this game Saturday, uh what do we do well? A, a defense. Defense balled out. Uh specifically putting pressure on Anthony Richardson. I don't think he's that great, but I'm going to tell you when you put pressure on this guy, he's going to make mistakes. Okay? He's going to make many mistakes going to create turnovers and um i think that's going to be a a reason for us to uh to do well and win this ball game i think we're going to get we're going to get to him and we're going to make him make mistakes um and then i think our secondary is going to come to play finally they're going to come to play and they're going to do well we know our offense is going to ball we know that we all know that we're going to put some points up but if we win this game and beat Florida like we should, you know, our defense did what they needed to do. They played well. Okay. I really mean that. I think our ends are going to do well too. I think they're going to have a great game. I think you're going to see a few sacks from our ends. What do you think, Morrison? Yeah, I agree. Uh, I think, uh, I'm going to see uh, some pressure up on the line, you know, with Byron Young, Tyler Barron, uh, Omari. Those two are going to have a good game. I'm telling I really believe that. I think those two are really going to have a good game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think also what we need to watch out for is Anthony Richardson's legs, uh, especially on third down. Yep. Uh, That's where we've really struggled uh, for, well, for a long time now. Uh, That's the thing is got to get the defense off on third down. Uh, and I know Amen. we're going to have a raucous crowd cheering and screaming on third down. They're going to play welcome to the jungle or whatever they they throw out there for us. But like I said, you know, we can't, we can't stop this team on third down. The crowd can't, these players have got to, so we got to really bring pressure to him, make him, uh, double, uh, overthink or maybe double think or whatever the cliche is. And, uh, you know, force some bad passes from Richardson or, you know, bring him down to the turf and just, we need to, we need to really push this Florida offense back, get some negative yardage right out of the gate on first down and then definitely uh, set them up for a third and long. Yeah. Like I said, we got to stop him there. And Florida's got a physical offensive line. Their, their, their offensive line is one of the brighter spots that I've seen this year in watching them. They've done well. It, teams are just daring Anthony Richardson to beat him with his arm, and to this point, he's not been able to do it. So if I'm Tennessee, I do the same thing. I bottle him up, I, you know, protect the running lanes and don't let him get out and pass rush. If you're bringing pressure, you know, keep him contained and uh, dare him to beat you with his arm. And if he can do that inside of Neyland Stadium with 101,000 screaming at him against an offense who's going to go up and down the field against their defense, if he can beat you with his arm, then – Hey, they would have deserved the win, and I'll, I'll sing his praises next week. But uh, that's the position I would put him in, just like just like South Florida did, just like Utah did, and just like um, – who was their opponent? Who am I forgetting? The second one. Who they lose to? Kentucky. Just Kentucky. like Kentucky did. Um, if they can just make him uh, have to throw, I think Tennessee's going to be all right. Yep. No question. I agree. All right, guys, it's been a great show. I hope you fans have enjoyed it. 
I'm pumped. Morris is pumped. Dees is pumped. The three of us will be riding in my Jeep, heading to the game on Saturday. And we can't wait. So Vol Society will be there. Make sure you're following us on our Facebook at Vol Society. V-O-L Society. Make sure you're listening on Twitter and YouTube. Where are we on Twitter, David? Society Vol. It's backwards. So Society Vol at Society Vol. At Society Vol, yeah. And be sure to rate and subscribe to the podcast wherever you're consuming the podcast. Yes. That helps us out a lot when you rate. Yes. Helps the analytics. Helps the analytics. Please be sure to do that. Share it with your friends, guys. If you love listening to podcasts, if you know a Tennessee fan that's going to enjoy this during a, a workout session or on their way to, to work in the car, share it. All right? We love you guys. And by the way, we just crossed on our Facebook page as of two hours ago. We're now over 16,000 followers on Facebook alone. God, it's incredible. We've only been around two years, guys. This is organic growth of 16,000 of the greatest volunteer fans around. And it's going to keep going. So we want you to be a part of it. I'm going to end this show with our last question. We always do this at the end of every episode. And I am in particular really excited to see what uh, what my uh, buddies have to say on this one. I've got my prediction right here in front of me. But let's go now to our score prediction for the Tennessee-Florida game. We will start with David Morrison. All right, so my score prediction, uh, Lux, I'm excited about this game. I think this is going to be a raucous atmosphere. We've, we've already laid out the, the foundation for it. Uh, I am going with, on Saturday, Tennessee 30, Florida 21. I think this can be an emotional game. It's going to be a hard-fought game. It's going to be somewhat similar to Pitt, but I think Tennessee will – execute better than what they did against Pitt. Uh, Florida, to me, is going into a hornet's nest on Saturday. It's it's going to be 101,000 crazy Tennessee fans. I mean, yeah, you're going to have some Florida fans mixed in there, but it's going to be overwhelmed. You got Checker Nealon. We haven't even mentioned Checker Nealon throughout the whole podcast yet. Uh, it's going to be a great atmosphere. I think Tennessee goes out there, takes care of business. Uh, like I said, it's, you know, they'll cover the spread. I don't expect, you know, a 40 point, you know, putting 40 on the board, but I think a nice 30 to 21 win for the Volunteers uh, sets us up into the bye week going 4-0 and ranking in the top 10. I love it. David Dees, talk to me. I'm going Tennessee 38, Florida 21. Wow. I like it. Short and sweet. And I'm also going to predict that the defense gets one of those scores. There's your hot take. Hmm. Wow. All right, guys. My prediction is so very close to David D's. Volunteers, 38. The Florida Gators. 24. I can't wait, guys. It is here. It is here. It is here. The greatest game of the week in college football is here. And yours truly will be in attendance. Be sure to follow us on our Facebook. Twitter, YouTube, wherever, and especially on our podcast, wherever you listen, Spotify, Amazon, or Apple, 
subscribe, rate, review. Guys, we love you. We're excited. Have a great evening. Go Vols. And let's beat the Gators. <laughs>